I'm Dr. Jennifer Gaudiani. There are a few important things to clarify before I begin my reading today. One, I did my hair for the first time today in two weeks because I was working. Two, I am in my octopus onesie. Therefore, I am perhaps the most comfortable person on the planet. Today, I'm going to continue this reading series where I'm reading from my book, Sick Enough. I'm reading the little boxes at the end of chapters. And today I'm going to be reading from the box called Exercise During Recovery from the end of the chapter Hormones and Bones. I would like once again to invite those of you who would like one to grab your snack or your meal and begin that time during this cozy little reading time. Exercise During Recovery. Compulsive or obsessive exercise can be a feature of any eating disorder. Patients can come to feel that movement is about punishing themselves, burning calories, or weight loss. Healing this particular aspect of patients' relationships with their bodies is a key feature of the recovery process. For years, when I lectured about hormones and bones, I would cite the study that showed that any exercise while underweight worsens bone density, and I would conclude, serious exercise is a privilege of full recovery. This remains true. However, I've now revised my statement to include, but movement during weight restoration and recovery makes recovery sustainable. Many eating disorder providers and programs insist that patients minimize physical movement during eating disorder recovery. Their logic is that patients should focus all their calories on restoring their bodies and weight. Additionally, they rightly question whether patients in the depths of their mental illness and starved brain can regulate movement and engage mindfully as opposed to grimly counting calories or pushing themselves to extremes as they perhaps have been doing. I am convinced now, however, that eating disorder specialists should permit, where medically and psychologically appropriate, and oversee physical movement throughout the recovery process, regardless of level of care. The brilliant physical and occupational therapists in the hospital at my previous job started me on this pathway. Very weak patients would brighten and glow as they saw rest, nutrition, and expert physical therapy, PT, and occupational therapy, OT, result in stronger, more independent bodies. They accepted nutrition and rest more readily because they saw such rapid improvements in their functional status. In my current outpatient clinic, this has become even clearer. From athletes to artists who rarely put on a pair of sneakers, in patients of all sizes, I offer to help them get moving as early as possible in the recovery process to the degree that they wish to participate and are able. Asking patients not to do physical activity during recovery unwittingly reinforces their eating disorder perception that movement is for burning calories. When we tell them not to move or they'll burn too many calories, we're validating the eating disorder logic. Instead, the treatment team optimally can agree on a slow, stepwise increase in movement, increasing calories as needed. The therapist can process with a patient how it feels to do a wide variety of exercise, yoga one day, a walk the next, and some free weights the third with rest days each week. Might this contribute to some bone density loss while patients remain low on sex hormones? It might but I'm convinced that creating a sustainable recovery plan that leads patients to long-term health most often involves movement. Their achievement of full eating disorder recovery earlier will certainly be best for their bones in the long run. One caveat is that patients who cannot medically or psychologically engage in movement safely should be encouraged to wait until their recovery is further along. As a final word, Everyone working to recover from an eating disorder should put aside their step tracking devices, whether on their phones or worn as a watch, and move through the world mindfully. Any focus on the numbers, from weight to steps to calories burned to miles, risks servicing the eating disorder rather than one's true values and goals. Thank you so much for joining me in this little reading moment. I wish you all the best. I remind you, be gentle with yourselves. Be gentle with the anxiety in this crazy, chaotic, uncertain, scary time. 
Give yourself whatever you need to take care of yourself, to fill you up. I'll see you next time.